in March of 2001, I went to San Francisco to pick up uh, a new recording I had just finished um, producing. And I went to a local guitar shop called Guitar Soul. If you're a classical guitarist, you know what I'm talking about. So I was there a little bit early, and another fellow on the street was standing next to me, and um, we were waiting for the guitar shop to open up, and didn't realize we were both guitarists. And we, we walked in, we met a, a mutual friend who said, do you guys know each other? And of course we said, no, should we? And he says, of course, you're both great guitarists. So we introduced each other. I said, you know, I'm Matthew Grasso. And he said, I'm James, I'm James Klein. And he told me how he played this 11-string arch guitar, which was a pretty unique instrument. I was um, quite interested in what he was doing because I'd been thinking about uh, changing the parameters of the six-string guitar. I just didn't know to what. So uh, we exchanged uh, my three CDs. He had three CDs. We exchanged and um, exchanged phone numbers. I went home and put his recordings on and thought, wow, it's fantastic. The added bass range to the instrument, the color, the overall possibilities just seemed much greater. It seemed like that's what um, my heart was yearning for, was some type of change like that. So I invited him over to my home to give a house concert and a master class to my students. So he stayed for a few days. And he said, man, this thing would be, uh, this instrument, this 11 string would be lethal in your hands with, you know, your creativity. And I remember picking it up thinking, where's the low E string? And, and feeling like I was completely lost, which was a nice feeling. That was a very humbling, you know, feeling. Uh, but I just kind of laughed and I just said, well, you know, great shaman, I cannot uh, play the 11 string guitar. But I didn't give up the idea of the harmonic uh, kind of contrapuntal expansion. So many months of serious contemplation, I realized that if I added just one bass string, I could have the same melodic range that he has on his instrument. And at least that seems like a, a better direction to go if I'm going to do this. So at that point, I commissioned a well-seasoned luthier to construct a seven string guitar. And within a few months, he uh, fulfilled the commission and playing it, I realized that there, you know, there was many, many, many other possibilities way beyond the scope of the six string guitar. But I wasn't sure at the time if I could sink my heart into that particular instrument. So I played it for four months, made some transcriptions, thought about it. And during this time, I couldn't play six string or seven string guitar very well. So it was <laughs> quite a unique experience in itself. So I had to make a decision that I would just switch to seven string or go back to six. But I couldn't put my heart into this seven string. So I commissioned um, Greg Byers to build me a seven string. Greg Byers uh, finished the guitar and I remember walking into his shop and seeing it hanging there on the wall and realizing that my life would never be the same again after this day. I made a guitar for Matt Grasso about 20 years ago and I've been uh, collaborating him with him off and on ever since. Um, about 12 years ago, I believe, I made a uh, seven string guitar for him and uh, that guitar was a collaboration between him and myself in terms of its design he had some specific ideas he wanted to incorporate um, and I have here before me a um, basically a demonstration of of the difference between uh, a standard six string guitar and Matt's seven string. Um, obviously with a seven string you have a wider neck. When you apply a fingerboard to it, uh, the thing that jumps out at you, aside from the fact that there's an odd number of holes for the tuning machines, three and four, making seven, uh, you have this extension of the fingerboard. Um, in the finished product, there's a, a 
wooden ebony support underneath this so it's secure but um, what it enables one to do is to increase the scale length for that lower seventh string by two full frets <clears throat> this uh, helps out with um, the sound of the instrument the low notes it also makes it possible to uh, uh, with a special device to capo uh, to stop the string mechanically at one of several frets so I'd like to talk about the design I worked with Greg Byers initially. I call this guitar extended seven string. So if you notice on the seven string has two extra frets, and if you notice on the first string there are three extra frets. Um, so for those who know the guitar, in this case this is a low B right now, and this capo here, which is from the fifth string of the banjo, uh, can actually stop within the first five frets of the instrument, okay? But the actual scale length is longer for this string. So for those who are familiar with the double bass, you know, in the orchestra, oftentimes those instruments are designed with a uh, longer scale on the double bass, on the low string. So it's the same idea, although the guitar will only permit two extra frets, which is quite a bit. So for those who are guitar fanatics, it actually goes up, it can go as low as an A, beneath the low E or a low G. So I call this guitar extended seven string because of the frets. So overall, it's one octave more melodic range than a traditional six string. So there's obviously quite a bit more you can do if you have the right imagination. That's the most important. I know there um, is a renewed interest in, in uh, guitars with greater than six strings, not only seven string instruments, but eight stringed instruments, ten stringed instruments. Um, there's a, quite a, a following of, of uh, some of these expanded guitars, and uh, I think that's a good thing. It's, it's quite wonderful to see what what the players are managing to do and and uh, uh, expanding the possibilities of guitar music. It's great. <laughs>
the, the seventh string really only works for um, some guitarists. First of all, it's uh, more complicated, more complex. The left hand has to keep track of seven instead of six strings, as does the right hand. And uh, many guitarists find it overwhelming. <laughs> Um, Matt was interested in it for what he could do to expand his his musical capabilities, and he's a very determined young man, and and uh, is able to make it work for him. Subsequently, come to realize that uh, guitar building is my true meditation, and there's nothing uh, out of the ordinary about it. It's just what I do every day. <laughs> first met Matt, he was a brash 20-year-old or so, <laughs> and a uh, and, uh, really cocky kid, and, but with a lot of talent. And uh, I, I liked him from the start. Um, he's, he's grown a lot over the years, I know that, and uh, into a mature artist, and uh, I'm really happy for him. I, th I think that it's so difficult to make a career out of guitar playing, and, uh, and I know Matt has really struggled with that over the years, but uh, uh, the success that he's receiving today is, is certainly well deserved. My name is Larry Ferrara. I teach guitar at San Francisco State University, City College of San Francisco, and the Conservatory of Music. I'm a former teacher of Matt Grasso. He took lessons from me at the San Francisco Conservatory and I'm about to tell you a little bit about what it was like to teach him. Matthew, as a student, was very original, unique, hardworking, and a very kind of supple individual in terms of developing his musicality. Um, when he played, his goal was always to make the notes 
more reach out to the to the listener and more than just dots on a page. He played with a, a lot of dynamic contrast, tone color, amazing technique, and a very original style. Matthew developed as a guitarist at the conservatory in very uh, rapid ways, but also in very uh, special ways in, in terms of his um, ability to arrange pieces, to push the limits of the instrument, and to perform extremely difficult pieces effortlessly. So he really, he really took advantage of his education there and took every opportunity to perform in master classes, concerts, department recitals. And when he played, it was always a very special event. Um, that was because the music that he performed was unique. Um, his, they were very often his own arrangements and his overall ability to play with, with extreme virtuosity was always evident. Every aspect of his artistry is pushing the boundaries of the guitar and the results are very often very successful. He inspires a lot of people to um, spend time and effort and enjoyment learning music and especially the guitar.